fellow members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. What you're looking at here is a image from wax figures of George Washington taking the oath as the first president of the United States under the newly adopted Constitution, which had occurred just two years prior. And it's quite fascinating to see the stoic man here taking that oath. And what does this have to do with gold and silver? Well, you would be surprised. And, of course, everyone knows at the time that gold and silver was used as money. And also, some may remember the rumor that Martha Washington's tableware was uh, possibly melted down and used and given to the newly created United States Mint, which was founded uh, after the Mint Act of 1792. But, of course, we know it was used for utensils and other things. But there's something else that we need to sink our teeth into to where possibly gold and silver were used. RB50 had uh, sent me an article, which I can't seem to find right now, about George Washington's teeth and how precious metals may be involved. Well, there is some matter of the teeth. The trouble with the teeth here, if you go to Mount Vernon's official website, there's some really interesting information here that mentions these precious metals. But we're going to take a look at and uh, to get the overall scope of these teeth here, because I think it's quite interesting and fascinating to see how this played a role in George Washington's look and demeanor. And so here is a couple of facts about the teeth that separates the fact from fiction. George Washington was afflicted with dental troubles for all of his life, despite the legendary physical strength. In the Iron Constitution, George Washington's failing teeth were a source of regular suffering throughout his entire life. At age 24, Washington recorded in his diary that he paid five shillings to Dr. Watson, who removed one of the teeth. Letters and diary entries later in life make regular uh, reference to aching teeth, lost teeth, inflamed gums, ill-fitting dentures, and a host of other dental miseries. Payments to dentists and purchases of toothbrushes, teeth scrapers, and dental files, and toothache medicine and cleaning solutions are also regularly present in Washington's communications throughout his life. And here we can see that we'll take a closer look at these dentures later on in the video. Contrary to popular mythology, George Washington's dentures were not made of wood. One of the most endearing myths about George Washington is that his dentures were made of wood. It's quite possible that some of his dentures, particularly after they had been stained, took on a wooden complexion, but wood was never ever used in the construction of any of his uh, dental fittings. Throughout his life, Washington employed numerous full and partial dentures that were constructed of materials including human and probably cow and horse teeth, ivory and possibly elephant, lead tin alloy, copper alloy, and silver alloy. So there you go. There's our first uh, reference to silver um, as being possibly used in these dentures. And we're going to go back to this wooden teeth myth, take a look at that a little bit closer. Uh, next to the cherry tree legend, the story of George Washington wore wooden dentures probably remains the most widespread and enduring myth about Washington's personal life. While Washington certainly suffered from dental problems and wore multiple sets of dentures composed of a variety of materials, including ivory, gold, and lead, wood was never used in Washington's dentures, nor was it commonly employed by dentists in his era. <clears throat> now, I mentioned silver alloy before or silver alloy before, and now we mentioned gold. We know where ivory was used, but uh, where was gold? How was gold and silver implemented in these? We're going to take a look at that and make some educated guesses here. And for those of you who have some knowledge of historic dentistry, maybe you can chime in the comment section below. Um, but anyways, none that nevertheless was into the mid-20th century scholars published studies of Washington describing his false teeth as being crafted out of wood. Today, older adults still remember being taught this tale in school. In the National Museum of Dentistry, the Mount Vernon Estate and Gardens and the papers of George Washington project at the University of 
uh, Virginia find that these mythical dentures a common subject of interest for visitors. The origin of the myth remains unclear. The standard and most likely explanation given by dental scientists and historians is that the ivory employed at the uh, dentures fabricated from Washington by dentist John Greenwood became stained over time, giving them a grained wood appearance that misled uh, later observers. Indeed, in a 1798 letter to Washington, Greenwood emphasized the importance of cleaning these dentures regularly after examining ones Washington had used and sent to him for repair. The set you sent me from Philadelphia was very black, port wine being uh, sour takes off the polish, takes off all the polish. The now discredited stories of Washington's wooden teeth does not reflect elements of truth, however. For instance, in one version of this myth, Washington carved the wooden teeth himself, and it is true that on occasion he made his own repairs on the dentures made by Greenwood. Furthermore, the myth of the wooden teeth remains the only myth associated with a major founder that calls attention to the individual's physical frailty, and this serves as a reminder of the genuine struggles Washington experienced as he sacrificed his health and public service. Washington called attention to the frequent interruptions in my health to a gradual waste uh, committed on it by time. For instance, in his first inaugural address in 1789, a speech he delivered when he had only a single remaining natural tooth. The myth of Washington's wooden teeth conveniently imagines that wooden contraptions as understandably painful to wear, thus supposedly explaining Washington's dour expression in his most well-known portraits. Washington did actually experience great discomfort and facial distortion with the cumbersome mental and ivory dentures. Moreover, the belief that Washington had to use his teeth made out of ordinary wood as opposed to the technologically advanced and expensive contraptions he actually did wear, helps make Washington more accessible to the general public as a common person with everyday struggles. Perhaps this myth has endured because it balances Washington's imposing status in American history and the idealized images of the man presented in other myths, like the cherry tree legend, and doing so humanizes an individual who may often seem remote and statuesque. And it makes you wonder if wooden teeth were used by the common folks of the day. Uh, nonetheless, the trouble uh, back to this, it, uh, we'll take a look at a couple of other, of other of these things. We're not going into too much detail about uh, some of the aspects of it. Let's see here. So here, this one, number five, I think is quite interesting. Um, that George Washington retained several of his pulled teeth within a locked desk drawer at Mount Vernon. In a Christmas Day 1782 letter, Washington wrote to Lund Washington, his distant cousin and the temporary manager of Mount Vernon, requesting that the teeth be wrapped up and sent to him in Newburgh, New York. Washington hoped that these original teeth could be used within new dentures that were being fitted for his use. So here he states, in a drawer in the locker of the desk, which stands in my study, you will find two small fore teeth, which I beg of you to wrap up carefully and send enclosed in your next letter to me. I'm positive I left them there or in the secret drawer in the locker of the same desk. And uh, then there's another thing which is quite interesting, that Washington had bought human teeth from African Americans. Deep within one of the Washington's account books in his entry, which details Washington's purchase of nine teeth from Negroes for 122 shillings. It's not clear if Washington intended to use the teeth as implants or within a new set of dentures or if he employed the teeth at all. While this transaction might seem morbid to a modern audience, purchasing human teeth was a fairly common practice in the 18th century for affluent individuals. <clears throat> and then it talks about how the uh, this this uh, particular story about how the by the time of the inauguration he had only one working tooth remaining, and then the final survivor was finally pulled by Dr. John Greenwood in 1796, and Washington allowed his dentist to retain the famous tooth as a memento. Greenwood eventually had the tooth inserted into a small glass display that he hung from his watch chain. I wonder where that tooth is now. Um, he did use teeth from, uh, again, a multiple variety of different sources, including animal teeth and ivory, and uh, so quite fascinating indeed. So here we see 
a, uh, a look at the only surviving set of dentures from that are on display at Mount Vernon. And I've actually seen these in person, and it's quite an interesting contraption. You can see how bulky they are, and some of the lower teeth you can see have kind of cracked and broken here. Uh, but the question is, where is the gold, or where would the gold be? Now, earlier it mentioned that gold and the silver alloy were used in various sets of teeth throughout Washington's life. Uh, this particular set may not have any, any of those. However, the silver alloy could very well be intermixed with the frame of this. And uh, But note that there was a lead base that kind of, I guess, helped to fit the palate. Of course, then you would get lead poisoning, but at the time they didn't realize. And then you see here this, this, this uh, uh, plastic cable here that's been used, and that's to keep those shut. There's springs back here that essentially spring open so that uh, the, the, the mouth uh, will open up naturally and you have to close your jaw and keep it closed and keep those springs down. So that helped to sort of uh, give you an idea of why there's that clenched jaw look when you see Washington's portraits and also intended to, to protrude his lips and um and the area around his mouth there as you can see these things literally would be a mouthful uh to have and of course it obviously uh impeded his speech and so he uh when he had to wear these he had to kind of um uh make sure that he wasn't um talking too much and it probably could be very awkward in in um, forming words so very interesting indeed. Thank you again, RB50, for this information. Quite fascinating. And post your thoughts below about what you think about this. Pretty interesting indeed. I'd like to extend the multitude of gratitude to you all for watching. And encourage you to please rate, comment, and subscribe.